we'll hear from Errol Caslin with Caltrans. Errol's the supervising bridge engineer and chief of structure investigations for Northern California. Errol Caslin uh, will be our next speaker here, and he's going to tell us what they're doing in uh, as far as bridge deck preservation with sealers in the state of California. Uh, Errol. Uh, well, thank you for the introduction, and uh, Sarah and, uh, and my other co-panelists, I want to commend you on your presentation. It's very interesting and informative for me to see what everybody's doing, and uh, um, uh, really very impressive work by your state DOTs. In any case, um, uh, moving ahead, my name uh, is Errol Caslin. My I work with our Office of Structure, Maintenance, and Investigations. I'm the Chief of Bridge Investigations for Northern California. For the topic that I'd like to present to you today is an in-house study that we did uh, on high molecular weight methacrylate and its properties for crack penetration. This was uh, performed in-house, and I think you may find it uh, kind of interesting. And so with that, I'll, I'll go ahead and, and get started here. Uh, you know, uh, just an agenda for the presentation, I'll give us a uh, a brief overview of uh, the methacrylate use in California in our bridge deck preservation program and uh, uh, present an internal study conducted uh, to determine the effectiveness of methacrylate in penetrating uh, deck surface cracks. This uh, was noteworthy for us in that the study was performed in-house. Samples were taken uh, from actual contract applications using our typical specifications and construction and application practices. Uh, these weren't lab studies, this was uh, real world studies, and the results of this really provided useful data for us that validates our use of methacrylate for bridge deck crack sealing. You know, our use of methacrylate in bridge deck preservation, uh, 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 high molecular weight methacrylate is used extensively in our deck preservation program. Uh, you know, as been mentioned before, uh, the design requirement for methacrylate in California is to fill and seal uh, deck surface cracks to inhibit, inhibit moisture intrusion and extend the service life of the bridge deck. The design requirement really is not as a deck protective treatment or waterproofing system to uh, uh, inhibit chloride ion intrusion, although certainly we recognize there, it does possess those properties. We have other strategies and materials that we use for a deck protective system. And nor is it really used as a concrete healer, uh, sort of, and I have that in parentheses in my presentation because uh, while its design requirement isn't used for, uh, you know, any type of concrete deck repair strategy, it's widely believed amongst our maintenance engineering staff that methacrylate is effective at restoring some strength properties to a cracked concrete deck. And uh, often we have used it uh, to stabilize decks that uh, were starting to kind of come apart on us until we could put together uh, funding for a more extensive repair strategy. I think, like, I think of it in my uh, my tool box as being a, kind of a Hail Mary application for uh, gluing a deck back together again uh, in, in order to buy us some time. In California, methacrylate has had widespread use since the early 1990s. Uh, definitely have had acceptable perceived results during its uh, the onset of its use. We did uh, commission research studies with uh, universities to validate the perceived performance of methacrylate. And, and uh, at least one of those studies really focused on the surface penetration of the, the resin and not necessarily the crack penetration. And so an internal study was initiated in 2007 by our senior bridge maintenance design engineer, Mr. Mike Lee, who determined uh, the uh, penetration properties and the deck cracks. And really the question that we wanted to have answered was in our real world applications, does the high molecular weight uh, methacrylate meet the design requirements to fill and seal uh, deck surface cracks. And so with that, I'm really going to switch over to a presentation that Mike had prepared along with Mr. Robert Reese, for a materials engineer from our testing laboratory, that summarizes the results of the study. And so uh, getting into this, uh, uh, and I definitely want to acknowledge my colleagues in the department, Mike Lee and Rob Reese. Uh, just a quick history of methacrylate use uh, in California in the early 1980s. Uh, we experimented with resins to repair uh, cracks in pavements and bridge decks by either gravity or capillary action. Uh, high molecular weight uh, methacrylate resin with a viscosity of a, you know, less of uh, 25 centipause was determined to be best suited for that application. In 1984, we wrote a methacrylate bridge deck treatment specification and uh, started using that in contract applications, flooding the bridge decks with uh, methacrylate to repair pattern deck cracks on the surface uh, starts becoming a standard practice. 
in the uh, 90s, uh, our bridge preservation program uh, gets a big funding boost. In 1998, uh, we were treating about 30 bridges a year with Methacrylate. In 1999, after a funding boost, we moved up to 300. Uh, really a, wide, a big bump in the 90s, and uh, we have continued with that application since, uh, that kind of pace of application since. Uh, Caltrans spends uh, over 90 million a year in bridge preservation activities. That was the figure when this presentation was created a few years back. Uh, now we're in the $120 million a year range. And certainly con the consistent statement here is that deck treatment is a significant portion of that amount. Some 80% of our bridge preservation expenditures go to deck treatment and deck preservation activities. So, you know, they really, want, as I mentioned, we wanted to uh, get an understanding, are we getting our money's worth with methacrylate? And so let's take a look and see what the results were. A quick uh, overview of the study. The purpose of the study was to determine the effectiveness of the high molecular weight methacrylate to penetrate, penetrate uh, concrete deck cracks. Uh, so beginning in 2007, we cored every single bridge deck that we had under contract to treat with methacrylate. We cored every single one of them. Two cores uh, were extracted uh, as a minimum, eight cores as a maximum. The cores were two inches by five inches and some 1,200 cores were collected over the course of that study. Of the 1,200 cores collected, 200 were randomly selected for evaluation. And this is what we found. So, uh, but real quick, before we get into, uh, you know, kind of a collation of the results, I thought it would be interesting to see how we uh, were able to determine the methacrylate penetration of deck surface cracks. And so here, a typical coring operation, chart mounted coring rig extracting core. And here is what a typical core would look like uh, with the surface on the right hand side of the core, which you can see the crack plainly visible through the depth of the core. And uh, that's uh, what a typical core would, would look like. Here is a, a close-up of a core crack. This is a crack that did have methacrylate treatment. And it looks like the treatment has penetrated about 20 millimeters. If you look, you can see on the left-hand side, you know, some uh, material inside the crack uh, to the right-hand side of this photograph, not so much. So that has the appearance to the naked eye. Uh, but, uh, you know, actually determining the depth of penetration w required more uh, sophisticated techniques than just a naked eye visual examination. And to illustrate that, uh, here is a cross-section view of a core with a man-made crack, a sawcut crack that has been introduced into this, and then treated with methacrylate and viewed under black light. One can see how the methacrylate uh, has a, a kind of a glow in the dark effect. And so it's actually quite uh, easy for us to make a, a visual um, examination of our core samples when viewed under black light to determine the depth of penetration. So, in, in this uh, photograph, you can see that the methacrylate uh, uh, has penetrated uh, in uh, the crack. Uh, fully, and uh, what's kind of interesting is uh, one can also see that the methacrylate has absorbed into the concrete adjacent to the crack as well. If this is the case, this confirms our belief that methacrylate does kind of toughen a bridge deck and does provide some strength restoration and, uh, and validates our, uh, our, our non-design requirement understanding of the behavior of the material and the benefit of the material for bridge deck preservation. Here is a, a, a core with uh, uh, viewed under black light. This uh, core uh, plainly illustrates a, a full depth uh, methacrylate penetration. Again, this was a flood type application in capillary action through a bridge deck. And here we were able to get completely through the deck section with the methacrylate. Uh, just another core, this one's showing, uh, you know, some voids in, uh, you know, some of the, uh, the areas. Uh, again, you know, just uh, one more photographic series to be able to illustrate uh, the benefit of looking at it under, uh, with, under black light with uh, not viewing under the naked eye. This, uh, this photograph, you can see a crack uh, here, but we really can't see the crack tip or the resin penetration, but when viewed under black light, you can see the uh, plainly see the penetration of the uh, methacrylate and its uh, uh, di distribution uh, down toward the crack tip. But with that, we'll get into the results. Uh, the data that was collected in, in the study uh, included our basic contract and bridge information, crack width when uh, measured at about a quarter inch below the top surface so that we could ignore any edge swelling effects. 
the depth of the crack and the depth of the resin penetration. So those are the features that we were comparing with. And here is a uh, bar chart that illustrates the distribution of the crack widths in the core samples that we collected. And most of them that we uh, sampled were in the fine to moderate size or the condition state one, condition state two uh, range for uh, crack width, uh, with some that were a little bit better. And again, just another uh, a chart here that represents the same data in a different format. You can see the bulk of them here were in that uh, uh, fine to moderate width size range. Uh, the depth of the crack, this was the distribution of our samples of uh, how deep the cracks were. The majority of the core samples had crack depths in the two to three inches range, kind of terminating right around the top mat of reinforcement. But we also did have representative uh, uh, samples with uh, shallower uh, depth cracks as well as through depth and very deep cracks. And so there's a distribution uh, of that. And again, uh, not just the same data presented in a pie chart. Uh, so you can see that, uh, you know, the, the majority of them, some 60, 60 odd percent uh, were terminating at the top mat. So what do we find? So there was a lot of ways that we could represent the data in order to gain some meaning from it. And in this graph here, this uh, I think is a good tell for us. This uh, shows the depth of penetration as a percentage of the crack length. Right, so the depth of penetration as a percentage of the crack length. And if you look at the first bar here, you'll see that in 121 samples, uh, we had over 90% uh, penetration relative to the crack length. If one considers good resin penetration as uh, say 50% of the crack length, then we have uh, by this data, uh, this indicates that we have a 70% chance th uh, that that's gonna happen for any bridge deck that's treated with methacrylate. And about 90% of the time, we're going to get some penetration of some sort. This graph shows the percent of full depth uh, resin penetration for increasing crack lengths. And this is a, a real good piece of data for us because what it said was, uh, what this says is regardless of what the crack depth is, we got a 60% chance that we're going to fill the thing completely with the methacrylate resin. And as a, a, you know, an indie user of the product, this is uh, considered to be uh, good performance of the material. Uh, some questions that we had uh, that uh, that came up, and uh, I'll present some answers here, is that uh, does bridge age uh, make any difference with penetration? And what we found is that no, it really didn't at all. There was no correlation there between uh, bridge age and the depth of penetration. Again, you know, we've treated much more, but about 4,500 bridge decks have been treated with methacrylate. This was some years ago, there's more now. And how many uh, reapplications do we have? And at that time, we had less than 100, just about 93. There may be some explanations for a low number of reapplications. The, uh, the, the recommendation for reapplication is made by our uh, area bridge maintenance engineers uh, after performing a, a thorough visual inspection. And it's possible uh, that these, uh, our maintenance engineers uh, uh, have some difficulty identifying uh, new cracks after a deck is treated with methacrylate. Uh, we know that it, uh, deck cracking uh, is not a, it, it, uh, you know, continues to occur over age, but we do feel that uh, uh, we do get a bit of a fatigue life uh, reset with a methacrylate treatment. With that, that concludes the presentation uh, that I had. I want to thank you for the opportunity to present this to you and again acknowledge my colleagues Mike Lee and Rob Reese for their contributions in uh, making this study. Uh, the preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.